Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Uh, while the canoe is uh, settling out, getting the smell outside, uh, waiting between the uh, canvassing and the filler, I had another idea that, I, that I'm really excited about. It's an idea I've been having floating around in my head for a bit. And there's a common misconception that you have to spend a lot of money in order to get a good quality knife. The point of this video is to show you that the challenge that I threw myself is that I wanted to get myself a good blade for the least amount of money possible and I'm going to show you what I found. So this one. This is, I'll read, read the, uh, the model in the back here, More Knife Craftline Q546. I got this on Amazon for 11 bucks. And since I'm constantly ordering on Amazon for all kinds of little knickknacks, I got free shipping. Right, so I think it's $25. Uh, yeah, I think it's $25. And over, you get free shipping. So $11. Okay, I got this plate. So if I take this out of this sheath, what do we see? I love the blade. Perfect size. Standard bushcraft size, right? But four inches. It's uh, three, it's just under four inches, three and something. So anyone starting out in bushcraft or any even anyone that's that, that is a veteran bushcrafter couldn't ask for a better blade than this honestly like if you're looking for a bushcraft blade i'm not thinking i'm not saying this is not a chopper this is not anything else but for a nice craft blade this is awesome like it just handles and cuts like a dream why doesn't every single person use only these then because it looks like crap <laughs> the handle that comes with is plastic. I mean, it's, it's, for someone that is looking for just a little, just a little special, you know, it's, uh, this ain't it. Like, no. And the other thing is the sheath. I mean, they're perfectly functional, indestructible. Like, it, it, for functionality, there's nothing, there's nothing that can beat this, but it's just not very nice. It's not very pretty. Okay? So. We're starting with this though, $11, okay? So with this, we have our knife. Stay, you know, bear with me. We'll be doing this project with the craft line. All right, so what are we doing to do? I'm going to show you how we can modify this knife. The only thing we don't like about this knife is, is the only thing we don't like about this knife is the handle, right? So in my shop, I like making handles. We've made, we've made a few in the uh, in the videos, so we're gonna take this off. I'll show you how. I have a very scientific way of uh, doing that, and uh, we're gonna make a new, a brand new handle, and then we're gonna make a nice sheath for it. Uh, for the knife itself, the wood. You wanna get yourself a nice looking hardwood. See the grain pattern in this. This is called sapel. Sapel. I don't know if it's it's a couldn't find. Uh, I guess it's the same name in French and in English. But this is a very dark, very very dense. This is a very really uh, uh, heavy wood. I'm not saying to go get sapel. No, I'm just explaining to you where this wood is. Um, so I have my uh, sawmill that I just uh, I spend a lot of time in the sawmill. Just for me, it's like a little candy shop. I go over there and I go see what uh, what they're working on and, and uh, what they have lying around in the liquidation center. So, for example, these two pieces were just sitting in a corner, thrown in a pile, because some client ordered some fancy exotic wood for his deck or his house or something and paid a fortune. And there's always because it's a sawmill, they cut these things to length, and there's always little tidbits around lying around. And they know me, them. I'm constantly buying uh, different woods for projects and whatever. So yeah. I go over there and I dig through the pile and I ask them, "Hi, how much is this?" And sometimes they charge me a little bit, and, and, uh, but most of the time they say, "Ah, oh, just just take it," because you know they know I'm, I'm going to buy something else next time. So if you are a sweet talker, you can get some free wood. Okay, so this is just little pieces. They're not going to be able to sell these things. It's just little chunks lying around. So uh, that's the first tip. Okay. In order to get the material you need to do little projects like this, dig around. You can find it. And I'll also be using uh, this little piece of, of wood that I had lying around. I think this is uh, either tiger maple or um, 
bird's eye maple, maple. So this, I just wanted a two-tone kind of look, so a lighter wood. I'll be using this, uh, th this one for the dark wood. And I got some scrap leather just lying around. So uh, if you don't have any scrap leather lying around, so you, to be fair and, and to give you, like, so not everyone's into leather working. Uh, if you have an old belt, just find an old belt, cut a piece of the old belt. So we'll be putting a piece of leather between the pieces of wood just to give it a nice uh, different color. And I, you know, the point is to learn new things. So, uh, okay, so that's the that's the handle. So we just have a, a piece of wood, piece of leather, another piece of wood, a couple of, uh, of uh, color differences. Uh, we'll finish it off in the usual manner, either with some gun oil or or something. Uh, true oil, sorry. Okay, so let's go to my scientific way to get the handle off. Okay, so we have very dangerous, and very sharp knife blade. Okay, so now we got the blade off, right? We got our nice bushcraft blade. So you see, this is the more HQ, the cheapest one. It has this nice long uh, tang. Okay, so no, it's not a full tang. It's not the you know, it's, but still, it's a nice long tang because you want to get your handle about here, right? So I almost have the, the tang all the way to the end. So it's, to me, that's perfect because you got uh, some of the, the uh, Mora, uh, Mora lines have a small little sn snub one that ends like halfway of this. So the Mora line, craft, the craft line, Mora craft line Q, anyway, has this nice long tang in the middle so plenty for us to work with and it'll be a very very sturdy knife okay so next step we prep the handle material look at here when cutting into this look what i found a nice burl are we going to use this yes we are <laughs> so it gave a nice pattern on the side here so I'm gonna actually use, I'll be able to use this section, sorry, <laughs> this is a nice little pattern on the side. I'll use, instead of using this end like I was gonna do, I was gonna, I'm gonna switch it right over there, here and use this section for the handle. So that'll make a really interesting swirl in the handle. So that's a nice find. Okay, so another part of this project is the guard. Um, a lot of knives, like this uh, K-Bar USN, has, have this nice little metal guard, right, protecting, uh, like, from the separating your hand or just protecting, separating the blade and the, and the handle anyway. So, so I was thinking of a way to, to add this into the knife, but again, without, without having to uh, spend any money. So. Going through a bunch of videos and articles, whatever, I stumbled upon this guy that was actually using spoons. Everyone's got an old spoon sitting around the kitchen. Well, most people anyways. Most of these spoons are just made of regular stainless steel, which is perfect. And this is a nice thick one too. It's actually uh, so heavy that my wife actually doesn't actually like, like to use these. So, perfect. We can, we have permission to ruin this spoon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the actual spoon edge. I'm going to pound it down on my anvil. You guys can use your, uh, well, maybe a cement floor or anything else that, that'll hard surface to just pound it straight. And then we can grind it off, drill a couple of holes, uh, the same, you know, the same uh, width as the end of the, the blade here at the edge of the blade or the whatever, this part here. And uh, and then we'll just shape it. We can get the we can grind it uh, close enough, and then uh, as long as it's, it's it's a bit bigger than the uh, than the handle, so that when I'm, I'm going to put it on the belt sander and I'll, I'll actually groove it into place. So that's another part. So it'll be a fancy little uh, little guard, and we got it from a spoon.
There is no spoon. Okay. <clears throat> Flat. There we go. Yeah. So just drill a hole, a couple holes, and then uh, use the Dremel to cut between the holes. And now we have the hole set in there. Not the cleanest job in the world, but it'll do. So that was actually easier than I thought.
uh, anyway, up to up to now anyway. So uh, I'll just stick this together with um, some epoxy, and we'll have to leave it till tomorrow. All right, so epoxied, I hope. And the last step, you gotta squeeze this in. Here you can make this sort of a vice grip. Uh, uh, nice and compressed. I'm just twirling this, compressing the, the blade down. There, nice and smushed. So that's actually a quick quick set. Should be uh, says here speed set epoxy sets in five minutes. Let's see here. Since I had two blades, I decided to make another one. So I just that one's a bit more a bit blockier and only the two different types of wood and a piece of leather in, the, in between so I just kind of stuck that together this one's still setting so between the two of them we should have at least one of them that are nice I think both of them are going to be nice though alright guys I actually left this to dry completely completely all night so we have two different types of handles We'll see what uh, how it turns out. So now things are about to get really dusty. Uh, since I'm going to be working with these blades a little bit more, I'm going to tape them up just for that extra safety. in the camera for sure. Let's wait a couple minutes for this stuff to, to, to kind of fall down and I'll keep you on. Alright, so I didn't really have an idea of what uh, the, the handles would look like before I started but it uh, turned out that's this is what it turned out. <laughs> that's what it did. So one with a slight palm swell right in the middle. Comfy. And the other one that's uh, actually smaller in the middle so 
the, the thing that decided that too was the fact that I used the uh, zebra wood in the middle that was already this diameter so I kind of just made the two pieces meet that one in the middle so still makes a very comfy uh, grippy handle so and this one is slimmer I made it very thin here so that you can when you're pinching it you get a good control of the blade so uh, yeah we'll just do a bit of uh, fine sanding uh, to get this nice and smooth and then uh, it'll be on to finishing started it with about uh, 220 and then I move up to uh, 400 and 600 and this just gets it a nice round smooth finish that it'll be comfortable to, to handle all right so they're sanded and I wiped them down with a tile cloth so all the uh, dust is gone so they're ready to get their final finish and as I've used in a couple of other uh, woodworking or scales I'll be using true oil gun stock finish it's, uh, it's just amazing it really does do a really nice job just pops out Uh, this wood is a very nice subtle beauty look at that two different grains Some very nice patterns on the end here that is just wow <laughs> that's pretty cool all right and this one should be even should be even nicer with these three ty different types of wood let's see how they will fare together Looking pretty cool. We got the nice burl pattern. Oh, that's really nice. It's all all different uh, different swirls and grain. So that makes I'm really happy with that. Really nice. The uh, I didn't even even didn't even plan that out, but the light, the little bit light, uh, darker, and then the darkest makes a nice uh, nice pattern. I didn't get the uh, I didn't get all of the little marks, the scratches out, but it makes a nice weathered look. So I like that. Like I didn't spend I spent uh, five minutes sanding after like the I just glued on the bell, bell sander. I spent about five minutes just sanding, like I showed you with uh, some span sandpaper just to get you know most of the bulks around and get a nice smooth finish but I didn't spend too much time on it so that is pretty cool so let's take off the tape and get the full so, effect they're a little, the blades are a little dirty from the process but uh, let's see how I can show that properly so here are our two new custom $11 knives <laughs> Does that look like a little, an $11 knife? I don't think so. That looks like a very nifty, customized bushcraft knife that, honestly, I'm gonna keep these. That is just really neat. They're really comfortable. This one has a little longer handle and it's slimmer in the end, so I really do feel like I have, I'd have a lot of control. Uh, this one has a shorter handle, so you see it, if it it, it, it uh, stops like at just before the end of my my uh, palm. But because of the palm swell towards the back, it it is just it's very comfortable. It's very very comfortable. These are razor sharp. So, all right. So uh, I'm also going to put another two coats of uh, true oil in this, which will give it a nice, uh, very very glossy. Uh, glossy finish because right now it's just the first coat of uh, oil so in the next video 
and I'm gonna start working on that right now I think in the next video I'll be doing a couple of sheaths for these two beauties all right so stay tuned and I hope you guys liked it it was a lot of fun it was good a good experience it was a good first uh, first try at some uh, partial tang knives thanks guys goodbye